Hi guys, how y'all doing today? Welcome. I'm gonna run this piece by you. I've been working on the last couple of years and it's uh, still very much a work in progress. And uh, I wanna do some breaking down of this thing in future videos and uh, talk about it a little bit, but right now I'll just try to see if I can get through it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a tip of the hat to Chet Atkinson. For lack of a better title right now, I'll call it Chet's Rag. Here we go. Try the ending again. Ending again. Nope, I'm better. <laughs> so, a little bit more about my song Chet's Rag. I just wanted to go over um, how I came up with that song in the first place. And uh, basically, over the last 10 or 15 years, I have um, kind of dived into some Joe Pass chord melody guitar stuff and mainly I found an old magazine I've had since I was a teenager which is quite a few years and it's a it's a Joe Pass chord melody songbook and it's got about six or seven standards from the, that era back in well we won't say when but let's say Sonny's one of them uh, you know it's anyway and there's some just beautiful uh, uh, chord melody arrangements in this book. Uh, Misty's another one. And what jo uh, what Joe does actually in his chord melody work, he doesn't actually incorporate the melody of the song in his chord melody rendition. He basically takes the the the, the chordal arrangement of the song, and he knows the melody on top, but he's playing chords underneath that really don't even mention the melody, for lack of a better term. For instance, he starts out, and I would sing, Look at me, I'm as helpless as a king of the tree, and it feels 
black and clean. Anyway, you get the picture. So uh, uh, he has these just this beautiful chord sequencing going on underneath what might be the melody, but following the chord structure loosely. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, all that just to say over these several years of learning this one little book, it's basically, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, you take one book like that, and this even applies to reading, I think, as well. Um, my buddy Chuck Cannon uh, gave me a um, copy of um, the book by the Roman philosopher uh, Seneca the other night. And uh, and thanks, by the way, Chuck. I appreciate it. I've been reading that thing, man. And he mentions a quote in there from uh, someone else. I can't remember who it is. but uh, but Or maybe this is just Seneca talking himself. He says, basically, he's advising his friend through a letter, Lucilius. He writes him letters. That's what this whole book is, a series of letters. And he says, basically, you know, don't don't read too many books. <laughs> he says, find a handful of really good ones and read them till you know them and you get stuff out of them. So without really knowing it, that's that's what I've done with this kind of Joe Pass book, you know. So through learning these series of songs in there, I picked up on several little devices that Joe Pass used in his chord melody sequencing. He would do things like uh, that kind of stuff. You know? Just tying those three different uh, inversions of an E major. Everything I refer to is down whole step, is this guitar sting down whole step. See, I'll bear with me, it's actually D major. Seven, and he would do that kind of thing. Uh, um, you know, just those kind of moves. And he uses some of the same ones over and over. He just has, you know, kind of like um, uh, Charlie Parker had, I think, I don't know, somebody told me one time, maybe 70 licks and that he played, and he just strung them together different ways. But it was a beautiful thing. So anyway, all that just to say, once again, that this thing is me just uh, thinking about that Joe Pass stuff and coming up with three different ver inversions of, uh, uh, well, it's an E major 7, E major 9, major 7, and then that's just an E13. I'll take it back. It's an E6. I think they're the same. Never mind. So anyhow, um, except that the 6th, uh, 13th actually has to have, um, officially should have a 7th in it. But So it is an E6. So anyway, that's that's the, what the main head of the song is based on. It's just playing those songs and coming up with that little melody around it. like that, like for instance, if you want to just take a, um, those five inversions of an E chord, here's the D chord, and again, because I'm tuned down as half the whole step, and uh, you know, you could, uh, songs just by stringing different inversions together and that's how I came up with the hit of that song and then I just kind of go into a different section and that kind of came about as a result of me trying to be more legato in my finger picking style I like trying to make those word uh, those notes ring just as as opposed to muting them or anything. And that actually comes, another great Tommy Emanuel um, piece of advice here uh, from, you know, practicing your mechanicals, you know, like uh, just, if you want, you want to get a strong thumb, you got to practice. I think he, he, he said he practices cannonball rag for an hour a day sometimes just to keep that thumb in shape. So, and I don't practice near as much as Tommy Emanuel, so uh, not that I could play as good as he did if I could. But anyway, just a little... Um, just a little tip there about how I came up with this piece of music and, you know, how you can come up with songs, just tying things like that together. And then, of course, coming out of it, I just, it's just a two minor seven with the 11. It's actually more of a two minor 11 chord. And that would be a five, seven, 13 chord. And then you flat that and then back. And that's just a, that's just a standard ancient, probably all the way back pre-Bach um, way to end a piece of music as a 2-5, two, 2 minor, 5-7. Um, but, you know, 20th century has brought us all these jazz chords that we can apply to these things that really make them fun in a guitarist uh, 
mind anyway. So, <laughs> uh, and then at the end of it, I I just rewrote this section again um, this weekend. I used to, at the end. Uh, I used to go just do this both times, and then go into here. go to that that ending and then I guess I do some do something different on that B section actually so I decided to change the middle one to that and I like the, the way that brings me back to the that right there so uh, and that's just a three minor uh, six seven two minor five seven back to the top and then I save the the um, all that business for the very last bridge. And then that, uh, correctly yet shoot and that's another uh, little example of just using open strings on the guitar um, and uh, there you have it so thanks for listening I appreciate you paying attention if you did if you made it this far thank you very much appreciate it you're inside me